from Emerson College in beautiful downtown Boston. This is the Jeff Santos Show. Rebuilding America, together, investing, activism, and supporting the middle class. Now, the progressive populist voice of politics. Here's Jeff. Good afternoon, Americans, and welcome to the Jeff Santos Show. We are live in Studio A on the campus of Emerson College. It is great to be with you today on this 7th of July, 2016. we got a great show for you today. Jill Stein will be with us at 434 Eastern Time. Uh, we'll take your calls at 772-925-8206 for Jill. You can email me, jeff at revolutionboston.com, jeff with a J, for those of you who are first-time listeners. And, uh, of course, you can also post on Facebook and Twitter at Jeff Santos Show. We'll take your questions uh, between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Of course, uh, two very tragic, tragic uh, uh, killings of, uh, by police officers um, of two African Americans. We'll get into that with her, boy. This is an issue that has to be at the top priority of the Justice Department, I would hope that there would be some kind of calling in to every police commissioner in the country, whether they can be in Washington or on a uh, conference call, to sort of reorganize how we work together between the African-American community, Latino community, and a lot of white and African-American police officers. These, these rules have to change, and they have to change immediately, because this is outrageous what has been going on for a long, long time. If it's not for video cameras, we would be in a lot of problems. We'll get Jill Stein's thoughts on this as well, by the way. Uh, Jerry Austin will join us in the 5 o'clock hour for the entire hour, and we'll take your calls at 772-925-8206. Of course, big day today uh, in the uh, Hillary Clinton hearings. You heard uh, four hours or so from uh, Mr. Comey, the FBI director. thought he did a good job. Uh, the uh, questions were very good um, from Mr. Chavitz and, and several Republicans. Some of them were sort of, you know, going nowhere. Uh, but uh, And Democrats did a good job of defending. But I think what is still at stake here um, is uh, are there any other shoes to drop, which I think is the concern uh, for many progressives and many Democrats as they head up uh, coming into July, meaning other uh, allegations about Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation and so forth. Uh, this obviously is an issue that seems to be done in terms of the emails. And like Bernie Sanders, uh, who infamously said, uh, well, uh, I'm sick and tired of the damn emails, maybe uh, that's where the American people are, too. Uh, there is a Republican base that wants to see Hillary Clinton in jail. Uh, that may not happen, though, folks. Uh, the fact is, is that Hillary Clinton, um, you know, now moves forward, uh, and if Bernie Sanders endorses her, which is rumored over the last 24 hours, that will only help her. Uh, and uh, kudos to her and her campaign team uh, on agreeing with Bernie Sanders on tuition-free for public universities. That's something that came out yesterday as well. So we'll see what all this means, though, if there is going to be this drip, 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 and how the progressive coalition holds together with the Clinton campaign, still a corporate Democrat, and how they merge together. This is going to be fascinating. And the Republicans, Mitt Romney going to be in Cleveland to steal the election? <laughs> Lots to talk about with Herb, Jerry, and Jill Stein. It's the Jeff Santos Show. We're back in a flash. Four minutes past the hour. It is indeed the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into. 
Herb Boyd will rejoin us at about 5.06 today to continue the discussion of uh, the tragedy both in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, and uh, Baton Rouge. And uh, we'll do that at 5 o'clock also, of course, the Baton Rouge case. But we turn our attention to the presidential race right now. And uh, joining us today on Skype uh, from uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is the Green Party candidate for president, Jill Stein. Jill, great to have you on the program. Welcome to the Jeff Santos Show. It's really great to be with you, Jeff. Great to have you on. Um, well, you know, lots of news um, to get to today. But um, let, me, let me start off with, uh, you know, why you decided to, uh, to run for president. Uh, as the Green Party uh, candidate? Well, um, in short, it's an historic moment. Um, things aren't going so well for everyday people. But if you look at the economy, the lousy, low-wage, part-time jobs that have come back, low wages that are barely above poverty level, black lives that are on the firing line, as we've seen so tragically over this last couple of days, um, immigrants yeah. facing mass deportation, wars for oil, blowing back at us, and the climate in meltdown. So the bottom line is uh, business as usual isn't doing it for us. And even under a Democratic White House, when we had two Democratic Houses of Congress, we were accelerating in the wrong direction with Wall Street bailouts and all of the above, uh, you know, fossil fuel escalation. Um, words for oil, et cetera. So I am, you know, I am a mother on a mission. <laughs> My mission is that we have a world that we can actually survive in and maybe even thrive in. But that's not the direction we're going under politics as usual. This is a really perfect storm uh, because the majority of Americans are not happy with what they've got and are actually rejecting the presumptive nominees at record levels of distrust and record levels of dislike, clamoring for something else. So, you know, uh, hold on to your hat. And the whole playbook of elections has really been tossed out the window already. So let's see where it goes. We're, you know, we are really surging. Even before mainstream media started to give us coverage, they have only just begun. And i got to say it's really interesting I did Fox News this morning, and I think they were actually interested in what I had to say. Take a look at my um, uh, my social media pages, and you'll see this rather surprising interview that took place. But anyway, you know, this is the election of surprises, and we need some good surprises instead of some, you know, distressing surprises. We have, um, you know, in this election, we're deciding not only what kind of a world we will be, but whether we will continue to be a world at all going into the future. I think it's very important for we the people to stand up and say no to business as usual and political parties that are funded by predatory banks and fossil fuel giants and uh, war profiteers and say we have a different way forward. We're standing up. Talking with Jill Stein, uh, candidate for president of the United States and the Green Party ticket here on the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, Ms. Stein, talk to me about um, 24 hours here, um, about the need to invest uh, in our inner cities. It's an economic issue, yes. It's also a race issue. Um, we just uh, finished speaking with one of our contributors, Herb Boyd of the Amsterdam News, uh, the great African-American newspaper in Harlem, New York. And I... Um, I could hear in his voice uh, the sadness uh, because I think police forces have been not trained to talk or communicate, uh, particularly those uh, in the inner city, um, white officers, sometimes African-American officers, to um, young men of color. Um, would you, as president, uh, do anything massively different than what we are seeing from Democrats and Republicans in terms of investing in the cities and in terms of investing in new policy procedures uh, for police commissioners and mayors uh, to implement, which to me is a necessity and a necessity that's urgent. Your view on that? Exactly. I mean, we need a national action plan for racial justice now. 
and this has been the policy of our campaign since we began over a year ago. And this was under the guidance, actually, of Kali Akuno from uh, the Malcolm X Grassroots Institute, which has been very, you know, focused on this issue, and that's their reason for existence. Uh, police brutality, but really the racist brutality of society in general. And we need not only to fix the emergency of police brutality, but really the, um, the horrific and violent racial disparities that exist in every sector of the economy and every sector of society. Because these disparities, whether they are physically violent or just economically violent, they have real life and death consequences. So we see incredible disparities just in health and survival and length of life alone just for being black or for growing up in a poor school system and not having education. There's seven years taken off your lifespan for each of those uh, hits. Um, so right. these disparities, racism has consequences, and we're seeing the resegregation of our schools and our housing, uh, incredible disinvestment from our um, communities of color, particularly in our public school system where we've seen 5,000 schools closed as part of Obama's policy of, you know, of um, education reform, which has, you know, been horrible for the uh, communities of color. So this is fixable and is eminently fixable in each of those areas. So let me just rattle off a couple of things. In the areas of police violence, number one, we need to demilitarize our police. We need to legalize uh, marijuana and treat drugs in general as a health issue, not as a criminal right. issue. So we, we, we demilitarize this whole conflict around substance abuse, which tends to be the major dimension of interaction between police forces and their communities to start with, which is incredibly horrible and unjust and violent um, from the get-go. So we neutralize that whole issue. Um, we hold police accountable and we put communities back in charge of their police instead of having police in charge of the communities. So that means we create police review boards, citizen review boards, which are elected, not appointed, and which have the power to hire and fire police commissioners and also to review particular uh, police personnel. We also uh, create investigators, which are available full-time for communities so that all cases of death or serious injury at the hands of police are investigated as a matter of routine because, you know, the way it goes now is that you can't point to a single case where, you know, where uh, police have been held accountable. And, you know, this is, um, this is a national scandal and tragedy. So we at least need to put accountability back into the picture and then specifically getting to where you were driving before. And then how do we address the economic underpinnings of this, which are enormous and which are a major driver of this, other, you know, these many other forms of violence. So we're calling for is our basic economic policy, a Green New Deal, which invests in our communities. It creates 20 million jobs to address not only the crisis of our economy, which hits hardest in communities of color, uh, but it also addresses the crisis of our climate and our environment, which also hit hardest in communities of color. And so we are basically delivering jobs first where they are needed most, and that is in black and brown communities. Uh, and we are creating all kinds of jobs which are nationally funded but locally controlled, decided through a process that is insured against the heavy hand of big money and special interests and backroom decision making that always you know, corners the money and the subsidies when they come in. Instead, this will be a participatory budgeting process, which you may be familiar with. It's a structured process for communities to make decisions about what kinds of jobs they most need to become sustainable economically as well as ecologically. So a community like Harlem or like Roxbury or like um, uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts or Detroit, you know, can decide, um, or New Orleans for that matter, they can decide what yeah. they need most to become sustainable using these uh, public funding to create 20 million jobs across the nation 
that's enough to basically put everyone to work on a good wage full-time job. Talking with Jill Stein here on the Jeff Santos Show. Jill, I'm going to take some calls in a minute here, if that's okay with you. Um, I also uh, want to let our listeners and callers know that uh, because of time, we're with uh, her until 459 today, uh, that I uh, ask you to keep your questions short. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, a lot of people, and I know that your campaign has reached out to some of the uh, Bernie or Bust and so forth, one of the big issues of the Sanders campaign, and I've been a big supporter of his, uh, has been the issue of single-payer health care, and there are a lot of people out there hoping for that. Uh, Hillary Clinton's folks have not been uh, that supportive of that idea. What is your thoughts on this, and is this uh, maybe along with the issue of climate change and banning fracking, which is something that Bernie Sanders talks about, are these a couple of things that you're trying to hook more Bernie Sanders supporters to come over to your side? Well, um Bernie Sanders supporters are already hooking other Bernie Sanders supporters to continue the movement and not to let the movement die because, as Bernie said, uh, it's a movement and not a man. And the principles of the movement need to go on, and they won't go on in the Democratic Party. And we've seen, you know, the uh, teaching moment happen right before our very eyes over the course of the last year where we've seen just how much the Democratic Party cares about this agenda you know, Bernie took this agenda and all the force of his campaign into the platform committee. And what did he get? Almost nothing. You know, so it's not just Hillary Clinton who won't embrace, uh, you know, a ban on fracking or, um, you know, an end to Arctic exploration. Uh, you know, that's the Democratic Party. And likewise, Hillary won't support single payer, and neither will the Democratic Party's platform committee. So it's like, what exactly do people yeah. hope for in going back into that graveyard? And history is full of lessons. It's not just Bernie who was sabotaged. Every other progressive campaign that's taken place in the, in the Democratic Party for the past many decades have all been, you know, basically um, marginalized and, and destroyed. If not by the Super Tuesdays and Super Delegates, than by uh, public relations smear campaigns, which we've seen carried out against Bernie. But they also were against Dennis Kucinich, uh, Howard Dean, you may remember, maybe not a progressive, but a peace candidate at least. You know, and they did the Dean scream against him and just sort of took him down out of nowhere for a preposterous PR, you know, smear video. Same thing for Jesse Jackson. So it's very clear. The Democratic Party's not going to go there. They've done a series of fake left, move right, Campaign, but even while they've allowed Jesse Jackson and Dennis Kucinich and um, you know and Bernie Sanders to be seen and heard, they take them down and they use them as cover to keep moving to the right. The party has only become more corporatist, more militarist, uh, you know, and and more imperialist over the years. We're not going to survive like this. It's clear we are not moving forward. We are accelerating backwards. Just look at what happened to climate emissions over the last ten years. Uh, you know, they have massively escalated. And this was the policy of Barack Obama to, you know, all of the above, wrap the pipelines around the world, open up offshore, open up public land, open up the Arctic. You know, this, this is not working. And the day of reckoning is getting closer. We know that um, a recent study described by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, tells us now, they call this the Oh My God study, and they've only just received it, so it hasn't been formally issued in print, but it was described at a recent conference of the insurance agencies um, from the U.S., and a senior scientist from NOAA was there saying she had just received this Oh My God report that tells us um, we're on course right now for a nine feet of sea level rise as soon as 2050. So this is not something we can just sit around and wait for the corporate political parties to solve. They're not going to solve. They won't fix it. It's a race to the bottom here between the lesser evil and the greater evil. We need to stand up and lead the way forward. Uh, it's time to forget the lesser evil and fight for the greater good like our lives depend on it because they do. No one is going to fix this but us. We have the power the minute we stand up, and I should just mention this quickly to give you a sense of that power. There are 43 million young people right now, young and not so young, who are trapped in predatory student loan debt, thanks to both Democrats and Republicans who've made that happen. 43 million, it turns out, and, and there's only one place 
those votes can go, and you're looking at it, I'm the only candidate who will cancel student debt, like we did for the crooks on Wall Street who crashed the economy. We cancel their debt. We can extend the same favor to the victims of that waste, fraud, and abuse yeah. on Wall Street. So there's good reason for 43 million people to come out and vote green in 2016. And the good news is if they do that, we actually win the election. That is a plurality of a three-way race. And furthermore, it's something that doesn't need yeah. Congress. The president alone can do this. So we have the power, and we have the numbers, and we have the solution. That, 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 I agree with you 100% on this. Uh, I want to ask you quickly, and then we'll get a call from uh, Rudy here. Um, you mentioned uh, a three-party race. It could be a four-party race because Libertarian Party, um, you know, is, is doing all so well. And, and for a lot of people, I would guess, uh, Ms. Stein, that uh, that has less to do then with you being the quote-unquote Ralph Nader of 2016 if there's another candidate taking votes away from Trump, presumably. How do you look at that? I, I, I want to get in here, so I ask you to keep your uh, question, your answer short. So the solution to a wounded democracy is not less democracy. In other words, you know, our right. democracy is no, our only support here. <laughs> Silencing the voices of opposition is not the answer. The answer is a very simple voting reform, which already exists in cities around the country. You can enact that right now. So for the people who are bent out of shape, about there being more voices that the American people are actually demanding, you know, we should answer that demand rather than further suppress democracy. And by passing ranked choice voting, which is a simple reform, you can rank your choices. So if your first choice uh, loses, your vote is automatically reassigned to your second choice. My campaign, the first time I was tricked into running for office, back in 2002 against Mitt Romney, we actually submitted that bill to our legislature, which was overwhelmingly Democratic. They wouldn't pass that bill. They wouldn't even let it out of committee because they rely on fear. Even if it meant that my votes would have made the difference and the Republican would have won, they did not want to lose their stranglehold around our necks to be able to compel us by fear. So what does that say? They are not your friend. If the only way they can... Uh, maintain their connection with you is by fear rather than by truly answering your needs. That tells you right there, they do not deserve your vote. We need to stand up. If we stand up, they will pass ranked choice voting. But we should not silence ourselves and go over the cliff because we've got one foot over the cliff right now and we're just hanging on by our toes. We need to stand up while we still have the possibility to take back our future. We need to change the culture of our police forces, and that means to get the racism out. It also needs, means to get the militarism out, and we're seeing people recycle from the military right into the police forces. So we really need a different culture, and I think the community um, police review boards where the um, citizens in the community actually have control over hiring and firing, and the culture of the police is really critical and can ensure that many things happen. There won't be one silver bullet that does this. We need to do all of these uh, silver bullets in order to demilitarize and pacify our police, get rid of the war on drugs, ensure that our communities have jobs, eliminate poverty, which is something we can do. We are spending more than half of our discretionary budget right now on the military in wars that make us less safe, not more safe. So by implementing our Green New Deal, which trans transforms us to 100% clean renewable energy by 2030 on an emergency basis, we make the wars for oil absolutely obsolete so we can scale back on the military massively, cut it by 50%, and actually put those dollars into real things we need here at home. And I should mention the Green New Deal also pays for itself these investments in jobs, uh, in the communities that most need it, especially black and brown communities, we pay for that also by the health yeah. benefits of getting rid of fossil fuel energy, which is enormous. That, that is a great program. Uh, I want to take another quick call, uh, but uh, before I do so, uh, are, are you looking at your Green Party running congressional candidates, state house candidates, those sort of things? Um, is that part of you know, your hope here over the, and not only if you get elected president, but, but going forward with, uh, with the party as, as a whole? 
Absolutely. And that is one of the main goals of our campaign is to help lift up this whole movement uh, of truly people-powered politics at all levels of the community and to bring the Bernie campaign into it. We're plan B for many of the Bernie supporters who want to keep the movement going. And we are running candidates at all levels, like the socialist movement and Eugene Debs back in the early 1900s. He ran at the presidential level, but as part of that, he helped lift up a whole movement that took office as mayors and city council and uh, and actually governors and senators and congressmen. We're doing the same things. We have great candidates. Margaret Flowers is running for uh, Senate in Maryland. Matt Funicello is running in upstate New York for Congress. He did very well in the last race and is running really strong right now. Um, Robin Laverne Williams is running in New York City. Uh, also... Uh, Jill, I, I got a little limited time here. If people want to find out more about you, what's the website to go to? Go to Jill2016.com, join the team, and go to Dr. Jill Stein, that DR, no period, Jill Stein, for our social media. Join the team. Let's stand up and make it happen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for watching on uh, FSTV. My name is Jeff Santos, and I gotta go.